Hey everybody, welcome back. We are on Unit 2, Economic Indicator from the Business Cycle. We're focused on cost of inflation, which is subunit 2.5, and this is part 2 in this subunit. What we're talking about in this video is the cost of unanticipated inflation, okay? Guys, inflation can be both anticipated and unanticipated. Of course, many organizations focus on forecasting inflation, right? And sometimes those forecasts end up being correct, right? So we're always anticipating what an inflation is. It is very important for many organizations to try to figure out what inflation is going to be. And again, what is inflation? Hey, that's a rise in the price of goods and services in general. So we've got anticipated inflation, but oftentimes, guess what? Reality is different than what we thought, right? Our forecasts aren't right. Now, guys, inflation or unanticipated inflation can be higher than anticipated or lower than anticipated. For this video, it is important that you know that what our default is going to be is we're going to be assuming that the inflation rate, that unanticipated inflation rate, is higher than anticipated. So again, our unanticipated inflation is higher than what we anticipate it to be. And here's the key, guys. That means the value of the dollar went down by more than we anticipated it to do, right? So again, the inflation rate, that's when prices of goods and services go up, i.e. the purchasing power of the dollar goes down, right? The value of the dollar goes down. If the price of goods and services go up by more than expected, the value of the dollar is going to go uh, down by more than expected. Okay, so here's the thing. We're going to talk about, again, who's hurt and who felt like across these four areas, these four broad areas. Number one, the labor market. What we're talking about here is the boss and the worker, right? The employer and the employee. Now, if inflation is greater than anticipated, the worker is definitely hurt. The employee is hurt, right? Why is that? because they entered into a wage contract, right? They entered into a wage contract, often maybe for a year, but for at least some period of time, and they agreed to a wage basically with some type of anticipation of what the inflation rate was going to be. Then the inflation rate ended up being higher. So the dollars they received, okay, as that the time period went on for their wage or salary, those dollars were worth less than they accepted, than they expected, therefore they were definitely hurt. Now, some people might say, well, why is the employer help, okay? Well, remember, the employer is the business, right? And the business sells goods and services. And what's inflation? It's a rise in the prices of goods and services. So their revenues are going up, but the cost of, like, labor, their labor resource, is actually not going up at that rate that they anticipated it to be. By. It's kind of sticky. It's staying below that. So they are absolutely helped by unanticipated inflation. Pensions, okay? Now, who's the payer of pensions? Companies and governments. They like that unanticipated inflation going up more. Why? Because the value of the asset they're paying, those dollars they're paying, is going down by more than they thought. They're going to have to pay these you know, dollars, the financial asset dollars, to these pension recipients, and those dollars are going to be worth, than they thought, worth less than they thought they would be. Of course, they're benefited by having to pay something that is worth less than they thought it would be. And the same thing goes for the recipient, but just the opposite side of the coin, right? They're receiving dollars worth less than they thought they would be. They're absolutely hurt. Now, the recipient of the pension, that's the fixed income earner, right? And that's the term you're going to see on a lot of tests. Fixed income earners, right? Again, they are hurt by unanticipated inflation. You guys, in general, they're hurt by inflation. So why am I saying they're hurt by unanticipated inflation? Certainly, anytime they're inflation, the real income of that fixed income is going down, right? The real income of that fixed income is going down. That fixed income, that means the nominal value, the dollar amount of their income is staying fixed. The real value, how much you can buy in goods and services, is going down with any type of inflation. Why do I say they're hurt with unanticipated? Well, here's the thing, guys. They agreed to work for that company or that government with some understanding about that pension. So they knew that you know, there would be some inflation, and they anticipated something. They had to have forecasted something. They had to say, well, okay, that pension's going to be fine, you know, as long as you know, inflation stays at like 2% or something like that. If it ends up being 4%, hey, it's, their pension is worth less. They might not have taken that job, right? They're definitely hurt by this. Again, fixed income, AP, macroeconomics, loves to test fixed income. you got to know they're hurt by higher than anticipated inflation. Rental property, okay? Again, we've got a contract. You'll start, you'll, you'll notice, guys, in all four of these, we've got contract situations, right? We had to anticipate inflation, and then inflation, again, for us, in this video, we're saying is higher than it was anticipated. So I've got my tenant and my landlord. 
But check it out, guys. The tenant is actually help, right? They're the payer, right? They're the one that have to pay the lease. They agree to have to pay this lease, to have to forego these dollars, okay, on a monthly basis. They like the fact that the dollars that they're going to have to pay with are actually worth less than they expected them to be worth, right? Because that means they should be easier to obtain. So they're going to have to pay their lease with an asset that is worth less than they anticipated it to be. They're help. And the landlord, again, reverse side of this, of course, they're hurt. They're being paid, right? They're the recipient, again, of this money. They're being paid with dollars that, were worth, that are worth less than they expected them to be, right? So the landlord, of course, hurt. Now, the final one, the credit market, which is actually the most important one, okay? We've got the lender slash creditor, that's the same person, and the borrower debtor, again, that's the same person, right? So we've got lender and creditor versus borrower debtor. The lender is hurt by this. The borrower loves the unanticipated inflation, right? Being higher than anticipated. So why is this, okay? I've got this little visual down here. I've got the real interest rate. This RI is the real interest rate. The lender is gonna part with their money based upon this. What is the real interest rate? It's the percent increase in goods and services the lender is expecting to be able to buy for parting with their money for some time period. They got T0, getting paid back at T1. They're going to part with their money for some amount of time. They're going to be okay with being without it if they can buy some percent more goods and services. But they realize the asset that they're going to be paid, those dollars are going to lose value over the course of this year, right? They're going to lose some value. So what they're going to do based on their anticipation of inflation is they're going to build in an inflation premium. That's the forecasted inflation rate. That's the anticipated inflation rate. So let's do it this way, guys. Imagine 3% real interest rate is what they require. They expect inflation to be 3%. So I add the 3% onto this, I get 6%. That's my nominal interest rate, guys. That's the percent increase in dollars I'm going to have to get, right? I need to get 6% more dollars, expecting the dollars going to lose 3% in value so that I can buy 3% more goods and services. Then the inflation rate, let's say, ends up being 6%, right? Being twice as high than thought. Again, nominal interest rate, that's going to be, I'm going to get 6% more dollars over here. But again, each of those dollars now are going to lose 6% of their value. So what's going to happen to the amount of goods and services I can buy? 0% more goods and services, guys. I'm going to get a real interest rate or real return on my money of 0. I'm going to get 6% more dollars. Each dollar is going to lose 6% of its value guys, I'm getting a real return of zero. I only parted with my money with the expectation I would get to be able to buy 3% more goods and services. I am 100% hurt. I'm the lender. And again, the borrower, why are they liking this, guys? They're going to get to pay back this loan with an asset, okay? These dollars that is worth less than they expected them to be. Anytime you get to pay something back in the future or pay some amount in the future with an asset that's now worth less than you expected it to be, you are happy. The borrower is benefiting from this higher uh, inflation rate than anticipated, right? Anyhow, I hope that made sense to you. Very important subject, often tested on the AP macro exam. We'll see you in the next video.